This video is proudly sponsored by Air Models. Check out their excellent variety of resin and die-cast aircraft models with over 400 commercial and military aircraft and helicopters available. Click the link in the description to see more from Air Models. Hey everybody, Captain Chris and Beowulf from the F-35A demo team. Today we're going to give you a quick jet tour of the F-35 and just point out some components around what we call typically the walk around. So uh, nose on the jet, what you'll see is under the chin of the jet is the EOTS or the electrical op electro optical targeting system. Uh, so that lens right there uh, is, holds our T flare, so our targeting uh, forward looking infrared. And so what that is going to do is help us target kind of like a sniper or a lightning pod that was on fourth gen. Uh, so that's looking out in uh, waves of IR and it gives me a black and white display in the cockpit that shows things that are really hot either show up uh, really dark or really bright. And so I can see things like hot moving vehicles, uh, uh, buildings, people uh, that are hotter the surrounding environment and basically target off of that. Uh, there's a laser also incorporated in there and that's what we use to target our laser guided bombs, so our GBU-12 and our GBU-49. Uh, basically put the laser on what we want to hit. Moving targets are a great example, so a car moving down the road, hold the laser on that car and that's going to uh, shack the target with the uh, laser guided bomb. All right, so what you'll see around the outside of the jet is not a lot of stuff hanging uh, like you would on fourth gen or previous fighters. Uh, and that's to keep everything uh, stealthy and our, our radar signature uh, lessened. So uh, you'll see a lot of external panels, a lot of rivets, and basically to do any maintenance or pull out any components, the maintainers are undoing uh, each rivet on those panels, removing the panel, and then accessing things on the inside of the jet. Things that are in there are um, electronic, uh, basically, uh, sensors or computers, um, on the radar, everything is internal to the jet and that keeps us really slick and uh, helps our radar signature, keeps us stealthy. So uh, what you'll see around the uh, left hand side, so down under uh, is our two internal weapons bays. So uh, we have two huge bays, I can actually fully stand up in those bays. Uh, they can each carry one 2,000 pounder, the GBU-31 uh, or an AMRAAM. Uh, so we can carry a total of two of those 2,000 pound bombs and two AMRAMs up in there. We can switch out that air to ground weapon station with a variety of other bombs. So those laser, laser guided bombs like I talked about or a rack of SDBs and that keeps us versatile uh, depending on what AOR we're fighting in or with the threat that we're fighting. Um, different range bombs, different range missiles. Also, what you'll see is we can hang uh, external missiles as well and bombs on pylons under the wings. So we'll basically add those uh, pylons, add the heat seeking missiles, the AIM-9X to the wings. Uh, that takes away from our signature slightly, but we're able to carry uh, more ordnance. And that would be for a different AOR where we're not so much worried about our stealth or our signature. Cool. Coming around to the back. So we can refuel in the air. So we've got, if you can see a very, Right below the, uh, or behind the canopy there, you've got the air refueling port. So we'll open that up prior to tanking, uh, either crossing the pond, get to a different, uh, basically a continent or a country, or we use that in training all the time to get more sorties, a longer flight time out of the jet. Typically, depending on what type of mission we're fighting, we fly between 1.5, maybe two hours without refueling, but we can extend that longer and longer the more we tank. Down here, you'll see the words arresting hooks. So we do not land on carriers. We're not that model, the C model, or the A model, sort of the conventional takeoff and land variant. However, if we do get into an emergency where we don't have brakes or we don't have a safe gear, then we may take an arresting or approach and arrestment, uh, or even a departure and arrestment cable. So the button I can push in the cockpit, basically lower the hook, and that's gonna drag along the ground and hopefully catch that cable and stop the jet uh, on the runway safely. Contrary to the C model, since it does land on carriers, the ways to tell the difference is you'll see uh, we only have one single nose gear. The C model is going to have two uh, nose wheel tires, and they're also going to have a very robust landing gear hook to take that cable on those carriers at really high speeds. So that's how you can tell the difference there. All right, this view kind of gives you a shot of exactly how big our engine is. 40,000 pounds of thrust uh, when it's in after, full afterburner. Um, and so, for example, for the demo, I typically take off at a reduced fuel load, so about 44,000 gross weight or less. So we're quickly to that one-to-one -one thrust to weight ratio that people talk about. It's in a full afterburner. Cool fun fact is the maintainers take the engine out of the jet. It honestly looks like a gigantic hole. Most of the jet is actually that huge engine. And post-flight, we'll have one of our maintainers, what they call jump the tubes or 
put on a, a onesie, get into the intakes, and they inspect the front of all the fan blades for any uh, debris, birds, uh, whatnot. And one of our maintainers can actually stand up full, uh, fully in that intake uh, when it gets all the way back there. So that's how huge uh, that cavity is for that huge engine. All right, over this way. Uh, in case you care, what you'll see here are, uh, they look like bombs, but these are actually travel pods. So um, kind of recycled from you'll see Viper West days. Uh, they used to paint these. We're hoping to get them painted in the demo colors eventually. But uh, honestly, this is how we carry all our gear. So we carry maintenance gear. We carry some swag for the to sell for the demo team. And then this is where I put my luggage, backpacks, uh, duffel bags. And as long as it can fit in here and get shoved to the front or back, that's what we carry. We carry it internally, so basically where the GBU 31 2000 pounders would go, so we can fit one in each bay uh, and fly with those on a cross country, for example. All right, what you'll see here, uh, up on the left-hand portion, you will not see basically this bump or ridge on the right-hand side, but that's our gun. So we have an internal uh, 25 millimeter gun so basically, whenever I go to pull the trigger, either for an air-to-air -air or an air-to-ground uh, gunshot, then that door on the uh, front of that ridge will open. It will fire the rounds, and then when I release the trigger, it will go ahead and expend the rest of the, the rounds I commanded and then shut the door immediately to regain the stealth if I need it to. So we carry 181 rounds. Not as much as some of the other fighters you'll hear out there, but they are bigger than the standard 20 millimeter rounds. Uh, not as big as the 30 millimeter that you'll see the A-10s have. So a little more payload, but less rounds. So typically it gives us about three seconds of gun uh, trigger squeeze. And then uh, we will use that in either air to ground strafe. So to shoot something on the ground from about you know, half a mile to a mile away, moving targets, etc., Or we'll use it in air to air dog fighting BFM to shoot down another aircraft. Right there you'll see that's our ladder door. So we have an internal ladder on the jet. So we can always let ourselves out if we divert somewhere. Or the maintainers basically, again, unscrew a panel, a ladder drops out. So we get in and out of the jet. What you might be able to see here. So uh, this panel up here, that's called our DAS uh, digital aperture system. Uh, so we've got six of those around the external of the jet. Um, and those basically fuse a 360 degree display or video uh, onto my visor if I want it to. And it's an it sees an IR, so again, a different wave than the uh, EOTs, but things that are hot appear either brighter or darker and so forth. So primarily use that in as another night vision camera. We've got one night vision camera embedded into the top of the helmet, and then we'll use that as a sensor as well just to show that video. Uh, everybody's favorite feature is that, that those cameras and that 360 degree display on our visor uh, allows you to see through your body and through the jet. Um, not used a ton tactically, but it is a cool feature, uh, and everybody's done it at least once. Let's see. All right, uh, other things. For the cockpit, you can't see our seat right now. It's covered in the kind of a sun foil because it's pretty hot out here in Texas. So that keeps the seat and the avionics pretty cool. Right until before we launch, the maintainers will take that off before I step into the jet. Uh, things you would see in the cockpit is we have very minimal switches and buttons compared to a fourth gen or older fighter. Uh, this is because one, we can combine a lot of stuff from the touch screen that I have in front of me, but honestly the jet does a lot of things uh, autonomously with either with, with or without my input and it's correcting things constantly as it notices errors. So I don't have circuit breakers, I have a couple generator switches, an engine run switch, and a variety of probably 20 switches total in the cockpit. What you would see also is standard stick and throttle with a button for each finger basically that moves in a variety of different directions depending on which master mode air to air or air to ground that I'm in provide uh, a ton of different functions for me as the pilot depending on which mission I'm flying. Uh, I mentioned the touch screen so a huge touch screen in front of me and I can basically configure that touch screen any which way I like so that yields a lot of options to each individual pilot um, and it also provides a huge amount of uh, task load removed from my plate as I'm flying. So we have amazing autopilot and then also those sensors on the jet are going to uh, reduce my workload. I have all the data I need on that one display in front of me, vice some fourth gen or federated displays are looking at an RWR, looking at a radar, uh, looking at an ADI and all the round dials. All at one time they have a very robust cross check where mine's all in front of me. So that's pretty cool. 
All right, I think the last thing that uh, you're not gonna see out here today is the helmet. So uh, everybody's favorite piece to talk about is the helmet. Uh, we have a carbon fiber, carbon fiber composite helmet. Costs about four hundred thousand dollars because we um, basically every a custom fit uh, the the helmet to each pilot's head. So we get three D modeled. The inside of the helmet's cut to fit my head, and they measure my pupils, my eyeballs, and aim those projectors to provide that HUD footage uh, directly to my visor. So you will see we do not have a standard HUD on the dash like most other fighters. We have all of that info is projected onto my visor. So airspeed, altitude, any targeting data for air to air, air to ground symbology, that's all right there for me. So it makes it very easy. I can look off axis, see that same symbology, see a circle around a friendly jet, uh, you know, a diamond around an enemy jet. And that's really, really helpful for me. And then I mentioned we've got night vision camera built into the helmet as well. So we don't have a bracket on top with the standard MBGs that you'd flip down and look through. Uh, so that's another weight saver technology integrated into that helmet. Other than that, typically uh, we have the standard oxygen mask, headphones in the, in the jet, and then the microphone that all goes down into one interface and plugs into the jet. And keep in mind, everything we're talking about is in knots. So if you're thinking miles per hour, that's a little bit faster. But um, typically, we, depending on the environment, uh, density altitude or pressure altitude, temperature, we're rotating anywhere around 140, 160 knots and then the gear have to be up in the well by 300 knots um, and then typically fighter type air speeds that you'll see us flying around in a pattern 300 to 350 uh, depending on where we are and then once we're out in the airspace all bets are off uh, if we can go supersonic we will and that's upwards of you know seven eight hundred miles an hour or plus depending on ground speed and altitude that we're at so that's pretty much it and the approach speeds it depends we have a basically an approach mode where we can push a button and it sets the approach speed for you. We actually, we fly off of an AOA, so 13 AOA approach is what we're shooting for and that will vary depending on our fuel load that we're coming back with or the gross weight of the jet. Um, so we'll set that, but I mean, anywhere 140, 160 again, flaring slightly and air braking uh, like any other typical fighter. But that's typically the speeds that you'll see us going. Typically going to be in AB. Uh, we're definitely going to be in AB to get supersonic unless your nose is pointed downhill. And then we're typically probably in AB to maintain it just because we're a little bit wider of a jet, not as slick. Um, not We have a lesser thrust weight to ratio than I guess the Raptor does, a little bit higher with the two motors, even though it's a heavier jet. The Raptor can get to supersonic and mill power only. So it's a slick, really fast jet. but. All being said, both jets are extremely hard to slow down because they are so slick. They've got nothing hanging off of them. They're just super aerodynamic. You can look up general stealth academics and know that the uh, majority of the stealth signature is based off of the shape of the jet. Um, and then we use other tactics to reduce that even further and get smaller and smaller. But yeah, typically we're trying to be as stealthy as possible. As soon as we start hanging stuff off the wings or open our weapon bay doors, then obviously we're huge and just kind of back to a fourth gen fighter until we close our doors back again. But Typically not dropping the gear unless we're coming into land just because of the gear speeds. We have a mock and an indicated uh, airspeed that's our limit. So we hit that pretty quick if we're high up. Um, so weapon bay doors are huge, obviously a signature increase.